Welcome to the Tour Coach, everybody. I'm your host, Tony Ruggiero. Uh, it's the start of a new year, 2025. We've been doing the Dew Sweepers Golf Show for almost 20 years, actually right at 20 years, and it's morphed into the Tour Coach podcast uh, from our early XM PGA Tour radio days. And I want to thank you for following along. 2025 is going to be exciting for us. We've got a lot of great stuff going on. If you followed along, you know that... Uh, the tour coach is, they're the stories, they're the people, the conversations that I meet, whether they're players, fitness experts, mental coaches, performance coaches, uh, just the people I meet along our journey, uh, whether it's teaching on the PGA, Corn Ferry, Live Tour, LPGA, Symmetra Tours, or college players, but especially down at my home at Old Palm Golf Club in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. These are all the stories and the people that uh, I run into that I think can add some value to your instruction program, help you play the game of golf better. We couldn't do the tour coach without our longtime sponsors, uh, especially Shrixon Cleveland Golf, been with them for over 20 years. Uh, Mitch McConnell, Buick GMC, uh, here in Mobile and all over the country. They, Mitch has been such a huge proponent of us. Uh, and you've got our uh, local sponsors, Stokely's Midtown Garden Express, uh, Taylor Martino and Rowan, and you can't forget the folks at Vineyard Vines and Bushnell Golf. And Bushnell's been so instrumental uh, as well in pushing and helping us with a lot of our content. We're going to continue to push out what I think is great content, all designed to help you get better at the game of golf. Appreciate all our sponsors. Appreciate you following along. We've got some great stuff coming in 2025. More live lesson look-ins, more content. Um, hopefully, we help you play better golf. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of this journey. First one sitting in at the Dew Sweeper cocktail party. The Dr. first one being fellow fathers. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> what is yes. wrong with this world? Nothing. We both are fathers now. Well, well, yeah. I'm still not ready. I know, right? No. But craziness. Dr. Scott Lynn. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you. Always a pleasure. I appreciate your time, too, because I know you put up with some weird texts and phone calls when I can't figure out an answer. So it's all you. good. It's all good. This is the Dew Sweeper family, right? Yeah. It's, um, that's what it's always felt like being around you guys. Like, everybody would do anything for anybody. So it's uh, when, once you're in, you're in. And you're... <laughs> True. And you, uh, I mean, I was talking to Morgan today about her new job in New York. And we're helping yeah. her out with a whole bunch of stuff there. And so it's... Uh, it's always felt that way to me, so yeah, no, no problem. Lots of good things going around. Time. Yeah. What are you looking forward to in the golf space? You're in the forefront of a lot of stuff. Yeah. What uh, What are you most excited about to see, experience, and learn going forward? I mean, Swing Catalyst is you know the company that I work for, and like um, that's a big big part of what the Do Supers do. With I mean, I think everybody Morgan has stuff in New York. You got stuff in in Jacksonville there, Tony. So. I think we're making big strides to really understanding um, more about the biomechanics of the golf swing. Okay. Um, we have markerless motion capture now because in the past we'd have how the golfer interacts with the ground, but we just have to look at the the, the motions of the of yeah. the golfer on a video, and we did, couldn't really measure anything about that. Okay. Um, we're now measuring where the golfer is in space, where their center of mass is in space, so we can really. Mm. Um, learn a lot more about it now my challenge is going to be to take that information which gets another layer deeper in terms of <laughs> right and related in a way that you know t and you and morgan and like regular people can just use it and um, apply it to regular people and reply it to it regular people so yep. it, it's the more and more information we get i think we understand things a lot more and then my job is to kind of dumb it down and understand how to use it you know at old plum with the 20 handicap that shows up you know yeah. a member or whatever and then all the way to, you know, these, these tour guys. And, you know, so yeah. it's uh, it's an exciting problem to yeah. get more and more stuff because we learn more and more about the mechanics of the swing. And then, I mean, the ultimate goal is make people better, right? Have some more fun out there. Yeah. That's the ultimate goal. So, um, and we got to make sure that our little ones get hooked. That's, that's key. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm trying. So that's part of my, uh, you know, that's part of my thing. My little guy's smashing balls with little plastic clubs now. Oh, but so um, fun. It's going to be a blast. I love, uh, yeah. I mean, hopefully he continues to like it, but because um, getting out there with him would be unbelievable. So. All right, so you've got Swing Catalyst, so you yeah. see the ground reaction forces. You've got Launch Monitor, get all the ball stuff. you got 3D markerless stuff coming out, yeah. so now you get some biomechanics in there. 
and you've got this new cool like sensor edge thing with the grip pressure. Grip pressure, yeah. What uh, what's next? Like what else is there to discover or unveil? I mean, everything we've done so far, swing catalyst, has been related to getting the body to move more efficiently and produce more efficient golf swings. And I've always thought, well, what ultimately transfers the energy from the body to the golf club or to the golf ball is the golf club. And so I had an idea probably around 2016. We went to Japan with Swing Catalyst and we were in this high end fitting facility. There must have been 4,000 shafts on the wall. What? Like okay. a gazillion shafts on the wall. And the high end fitter there, this Japanese guy, we talked about the ground force. He's like, You think you could ever use this in fitting? And I was like, hmm, I don't know. But to me, like a shaft responds to the forces you put into it, right? So if you mm -hmm. push into the shaft a certain way, it'll deflect or it'll change shape based on the forces you put into it. And ultimately, like the pressure sensing grip is fine. Like it gives you some stuff. It's kind of like the body track of ground forces. Okay. But if we could ever get a, a 3D force plate in a grip, that's going to be awesome. That's right. going to tell us a ton of stuff. Until that happens, the ground forces are the closest thing to having some form of force input into a fitting algorithm. And... And so we've partnered with this company called Terra Forza Golf, yeah. which literally means ground force in Latin. Um, and they're using ground forces now to fit golf shafts. And when they originally approached me, I was like, I mean, I think it's a cool idea. I think it's definitely, but like, how far along are you guys? They're like, well, you know, and like, and so I've helped them a little bit with their understanding of ground forces and we've modified their algorithm a little bit. And even still, it's a pretty basic algorithm that they use to take the ground forces and determine what shaft. But it's unbelievable how much difference it can make. Yeah. Um, really I always old. tell people, like, I went to Ping a couple years ago and did a full fitting throughout the bag, all my wedges, irons, and driver. And obviously, the driver's the last thing they fit you for. And I remember being at that fitting, and, like, I probably hit five pyramids of balls during that uh, fitting as they worked their yes. way through all the different things. And, like, that's probably four and a half more pyramids of balls than I hit cumulatively in the last year before that. So, yeah. Um, and by the time you get to driver, like after five pyramids of balls, I was exhausted. And yeah, like, what so swing am I fitting myself to now? And so okay. the fitter came to my lab. I hit five shots on the plates with my driver. And I was like, yeah, those are kind of normal numbers for me. And then you just hit analyze. It analyzes those five shots and spits out white shaft. I'm like, okay, cool. So you pop the head off. You pop the white shaft on. Boom. I hit five more and I got like almost five miles an hour extra ball speed in those next five. And I kind of thought to myself, you know, I'm a scientist. I'm a little right. skeptical. I was like, yeah, I, I don't hit balls much anymore. Maybe I'm just warmed up a little more or whatever it is. Maybe, I, who knows? Maybe my technique changed. So then the spitter's like, well, keep the shaft. See what you do with it. And I was like, I don't play much. He's like, don't worry. Put it in your bag whenever you play next. So like a week later, I flew back to Toronto, Canada, where I grew up. Yeah. And I played the golf course with my buddies that I had played growing up. I played this through college where I was like working out and like working on my game all the time. And like, I know where I hit the ball in that course because I've played it forever. Holes that I used to, if I busted it, I had 100 yards in, I was like 60 yards out. Come on. It was like that's awesome. so far down there. And I don't play it all anymore. And I was like, huh, there's something to this. And yeah. we've had a few uh, like PGA Tour guys that I've worked with, their coaches that have been fit. And generally the PGA Tour guys, because they try to fit their equipment so often, they don't seem to find the massive gains in distance, but the dispersion really comes in. Okay. And so I think there's a big opportunity to use ground forces to really dial in your equipment too which yeah. is really cool to me so now we're not just worried about making the golfer move better we're trying to get a better implement in their hands um which obviously is going to make the game more fun we yeah. get everybody five miles an extra ball speed like make that puzzle come together yeah that's uh, it's going to be pretty fun what was the best thing you learned from 2024 um 2024 i would say my I, we've started now working with also, I don't know if you saw the show, um, the, yeah, the swing, swing stage. stage. Yeah. So we put the plates inside the swing stage. And I think the power of just moving the ground around on teaching people to produce different forces. Like I was telling people today in a little talk I did at the Swing Cat booth, like a lot of people struggle with producing like a shear force out of their lead side to kind of clear and create rotation. I'm basically batting a thousand on just taking the stage and putting the ball below their Come feet. On. Because if you put the ball below your feet, right, you don't you produce that, to. you're going to fall over. So people naturally react and produce that force. And then the other one is, you know, people that kind of glide towards the target, don't put on the brakes, and they get that kind of saggy lead knee. Yeah. Put it on a downhill slope, and it just fixes it. And, like, mm. it's not new information. People have been doing this forever. You're right. It was really interesting. I got to work with Jeff Sluman. And that was something we were working on in a swing, was trying to get him more braking action because he was kind of gliding past it. Um, 
and I explained, you know, if you can find a downhill slope to hit balls off of, it's really helpful for you to get this pattern and make it work better. And I think, and as he got it, he started to hit it better. And then he's like, you know what? I was just thinking about it. He's like, I've played Augusta National how many times? I don't know. Tons, right? This guy was like a Ryder Cupper. Like yeah, yeah. He, he's played Augusta National a hundred times. And he's like, if I think back to my second shot on nine, where you're hitting off yeah. a downhill slope to an uphill green, he's like, I never miss hit that shot. What? He's Come like, on. I strike that shot every time. And now it makes sense because on the downhill slope, it forces me to do what you're telling me to do. And I was like, cool. Wow. And it's cool to get backing from a guy like that who's obviously tried everything. Right. Like that guy's been in the game forever. Ever. He's, and so it's cool working with some of those guys. I've actually been uh, doing with a few of the like, Champions Tour guys, and it, it's pretty cool. Like We spend a lot of time just, or they spend a lot of time like telling stories and stuff and learning. You can learn so much from right. guys like that. But when, when he thought back to his career, he was like, I can't think of a bad shot I've hit off that second shot at nine. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Like maybe, and this is where like, I can't think of a place. Like if I thought to myself, okay, I want to go hit balls on my ball below my feet and downhill lie, like where would I do that? Like, it's not like I could think of parts on golf course where I could do that, but the, the greenskeeper's not going to let me take a bucket of balls out right. and hit, ball, hit a bucket off. And, like, I can't think of many ranges that have that. Mm. Um, and so this is where this swing stage is awesome because you can just put it in that position and just hit balls and, like, figure it out. Really cool. Um, which is cool. So that, that, to me, is what I call constraints-based yep. teaching okay. where I don't really say anything to you. I just go, all right, yeah. figure it out. And then you just, and this I think the that's a coaching. great way to learn. The less you can say and the more you can just have them learn on their own and figure it out and put them in a way that you constrain the environment to where they're doing what you want them to do. It's pretty freaking cool. Great. Doc, appreciate your time as always. Awesome, Thanks for man. sharing everything too. Really appreciate that. Anytime. All right. All right. Thank you, man.